During my freshman year of college, my roommates and I spent a lot of time playing video games. Whether it was sitting around and watching Kyle suck at Guitar Hero, or playing a way out on split screen with Logan, gaming with my roommates was always a good time. Keep in mind, I'm not exaggerating about Kyle sucking at Guitar Hero. <laughs> Do you suck? <laughs> it's kind of like watching a blind four-year-old attempt to play a Paper Jam's guitar for the first time, but it's okay, I'm sure he's a little better now. Hopefully. Probably not, though. This stuff was a ton of fun, but there was one point in the year where my roommates and I kind of stopped playing games together. It was depressing, I know, but there was one sole reason that we stopped. FTL. Every single one of them got addicted to this simple little spaceship game all at the same time. They would spend hours upon hours playing, and our split screen adventures went on a temporary hiatus. There were times where they would ask me if I wanted to watch, and there were even a couple of times that I did watch, but I really didn't find this game interesting, and I didn't quite understand it. I felt like I was constantly staring at the same thing happening over and over, and it just seemed stupid and boring. Eventually, I forgot about FTL, until recently. I saw it on sale for super cheap on Steam, and it was like $5, so I bought it and decided to give it a shot. After learning the ropes, within minutes, I was absolutely hooked. I spent hours in my room just like my old roommates did and instantly realized why they were so addicted to this game. Over time, I would quickly come to terms and realize that this was one of my favorite indie games of all time. And that was also the case for a lot of other people. I mean, check out these crazy reviews. Everyone loves it and everyone has a ton of hours on it, which are telltale signs of a great game. And there are a lot of reasons as to why this game is so great. So we're going to talk about them in today's video, why FTL is so freaking awesome. So what is FTL? According to their Steam page, it's a spaceship simulation roguelike-like where you can take your ship and crew on an adventure through a randomly generated galaxy filled with glory and defeat. What does this mean? I really don't know. A roguelike-like means that it's a game that isn't a roguelike but is like a roguelike. So it's not quite a roguelike-like-like, but is roguelike in the sense that it's a like to a roguelike. Makes sense, right? For real though, this game can't really be put into one genre, so let me give you the gist of how it works. You fly in a spaceship to deliver a special message across the galaxy while being pursued by a group called the Federation. Everyone's extremely grumpy and wants to kill you while you journey to deliver this message. You get into constant battles with enemy ships, and as you kill them, you collect resources to aid you on your journey and in future battles. One of these resources is called Scrap, and it's the currency that makes the world go around in FTL. You can use this scrap to upgrade your ship, recruit new crew members, buy new systems, repair things, buy fuel, and much more. It's super important, and you have to figure out what you want to use it on in order to have the most effective run possible. There's a bunch of random events that happen along the way that can either help or hurt your journey, and you have to plan things based on the circumstances you're presented with. So that's the gist, but even that doesn't truly give you the full extent of what this game is about. It's a roguelike, yes, but it also has a ton of characteristics of a management game, a simulation game, and even a strategy game. Each of these genres go back and forth and provide different aspects of gameplay that keep it entertaining. You have to manage your resources efficiently, plan out your decision for a long-term effect, and strategize about how you want to carry out your combat decisions to most effectively defeat your enemies. There are a total of 10 different ships in FTL, and each of them creates an entirely different playstyle. You start out with one known as the Kestrel, and it's probably the most well-rounded and easiest to use ship in the game. The ship starts out with some shields and two major weapons. The first one is a shield-piercing missile, and the other is known as a burst laser. When playing as this ship, your starting combat strategy usually involves making use of your missile to shut down the enemy shields if needed, and then using your secondary lasers to knock out their weapons. But even when sticking with this ship, your playstyle will change throughout your run depending on what you want to do. You can go the route of drone-based combat and spend a lot of scrap working on upgrading your drones. If this isn't what you want to do, you can make your ship a heavy attack ship and spend focus on perfecting your weapon loadout. Or you could even focus on growing a big crew and boarding enemy ships to knock out their systems in person. The options are endless, and even though each run is pretty similar, the differences in playstyle makes it feel entirely different. This is one of the things that makes FTL stand out among other games. Being able to change the concept of the game entirely based on what you want to do is a great feature and it keeps you coming back over and over. As you unlock more ships, you have even more options of how to play the game. Some ships are better in different areas, so you have to plan accordingly. 
There are many times when I get absolutely murdered because the enemy sends about 20 people over at the same time that there's a solar flare happening. See, if I would have focused on building up more of a crew, I could have probably defended myself from these people. They caused me to die and I had to start all over. But in FDL, starting over isn't really that big of a deal, and in fact it's actually kind of satisfying. When you die, you're given a score based on how you performed, and your scores can be checked in your personal leaderboard. This score is a simple number, and seeing how you did does a great job at making you want to try again. It's almost like golf. Your only competition is yourself, and you constantly challenge yourself to try to do better. You don't need some complicated and fancy global leaderboard to motivate you to try harder. Sometimes it's even more motivating when you personally know you could have done a little bit better. And the process of restarting is extremely easy. Just click a single button and go right back into the game. The developers know you want to try again, and they didn't throw in any extra steps to keep you from doing that. Speaking of the developers, they have an interesting story. Developed by a studio known as Subset Games, FTL is a truly indie project. The studio consisted of only two people, Justin Ma and Matthew Davis. Ma formerly worked at 2K as a game designer and branched off to work on his own project with Davis known as FTL. It was launched on Kickstarter in early 2012 and was the definition of everything done right on a Kickstarter. You always hear about Star Citizen and all these other projects that are scummy and do it completely wrong, but FTL was right directly from the start. They ended up raising over $200,000 pretty quickly, allowing them to get the resources to do everything they wanted to do. The game would end up launching on Steam in late 2012 and had an unexpected amount of success. Since then, FTL has been released on the iPad, and Subset released another game in 2018 known as Into the Breach, which is almost equally as successful. These developers already have a reputation of making great games, and it's exciting to see what they're going to be doing in the future. But back on the topic of FTL itself, we aren't quite done yet. The beauty of this game is that it's a game where you can craft your own story and do it how you want to. There's a final boss at the end of the last sector, but very little emphasis is put on it. FTL puts the focus on the journey, not the destination. Your journey can change based on your decisions, and as I mentioned before, there are a lot of different decisions that need to be made. But we already said all of this, and I'm not just going to sit here and blabber on, so what else is so good about this game? The weapons. The endless, painfully beautiful weapons. In FTL, there are over 50 weapons with different abilities ranging from machine gun lasers, to guns that shut down enemy systems, to hole breaching bombs, and even beams of energy that wreak havoc on enemy ships. But there's even more than that when you begin to take a look at all the systems you can install on your ship and the different drones and crew members you can have. You can get a cloaking system, a cloning device to revive dead crew members, a hacking module, and much more. There are countless drones with endless capabilities and different races of crew members that each bring certain skills to the table. As you mix and match each of these things, you're able to craft your own story and make it as unique as you want. As you make your way to the final boss, you're going to be given different interactions and events that cause you to get to the point that you're at. The final boss is barely even mentioned, if at all, and the entirety of the focus is put onto this journey, not merely the final destination. This is a great way to change the pace and keep the game interesting with every single run. But the core of the game's appeal comes from its simplicity. It's a very simple looking game. Graphics are simple, menus are simple, and gameplay is also pretty simple. Because of the simplicity on the surface of this game, it's not very overwhelming to pick up. So it appeals quite a bit to casual players like myself. But if you really want to get good at the game, you're going to have to try a bit. This easy to learn and hard to master mentality is what makes FTL so attractive. When I think of games like Binding of Isaac, I don't think easy to learn. You have to figure out what all of the items do, figure out which ones are good and bad, and figure out which ones you really need to use to progress. Because of this, Isaac isn't as casual, and for me personally, it gets a bit tiring. Yes, Isaac is an entirely different game, but I think you can still see the point. With FTL, I could hop on, play casually for 20 minutes, and get off. Or I could play intensely for 4 hours at a time. It's entirely up to the player, and because of this, the game appeals to a large audience, which is one of the things that helped to make it so popular. Now that we're reaching the end of this video, you may be asking, should I buy FTL? To answer your question, absolutely. If you enjoy games like this, you should buy it. It's one of the most bang for your buck games that I've ever come across on Steam. I bought it during a Steam sale and paid like $3 for it. But even at the full price of $9.99, I promised that you could easily get a good 50 to a couple hundred hours out of it. And if you're like me, it could be one of the few games that you absolutely suck at but still find fun. I suck at CSGO and I hate it. I suck at Sekiro, and I despise it, and the stupid bull boss. 
but I suck at FTL and it is one of my favorite games of all time. So give it a shot. You may find that it'll ruin your life. What's your experience with FTL? Let me know in the comments. This video is a bit different than my usual one, but when I find a game that I'm truly passionate about, I gotta share the details about it. I did the same with Borderlands 2 and Factorio in previous videos, so check those out if you're into the style of this one. Also, go and follow me on Twitter for pointless rants and stupid tweets about other pointless things. I'll put a link in the description. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this video, so I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time, and peace.